One of the best things that's happened for farmers in the last few years has been insecticide prices have absolutely crashed. It's awesome. So if you've got some bugs, you've got to throw out the old insect thresholds. It doesn't take very many bugs now to justify treatment when it costs less than $2 an acre for a good pyrethroid. You're sure right, Brian. The prices have come way down and they're very economical now in any crop. Let's start with wheat, for example. Guys say, man, I gotta cut my expenses this year in wheat. But when you look at insecticides, it may take less than a bushel of wheat to more than double your money on an insecticide investment. Well, why wouldn't you stop a problem insect if you're gonna at least double your money with hardly any bugs in the field? The key here is to get out and scout. Anytime you're in that wheat field on a regular basis, you should be scouting. Before you make any application, you should be scouting because the pyrethroids could be tank mixed with almost anything else you're doing in a wheat field. Well, it's not and just wheat, Darren. It's corn, soybeans, pass. wheat, almost any crop that you're in. And that's what we wanted to stress today is just scout, like Darren said, but you've got to check your fields before you start spraying. Scouting while you're in the sprayer, spraying your herbicide doesn't count. Now it's too late. Now you're going to have to go make another trip and it costs you more money. So that's all we're getting at here. That's the main point of what we wanted to talk about today is simply, hey, these insecticide prices are dirt cheap now. They can be combined with most other things, whether it's foliar fertilizer, herbicide, fungicide, you name it. Just make sure you're scouting for bugs first and throw out the old thresholds. They don't mean anything anymore because the economics now have changed. Crop prices are worth way more than they were 15 years ago and insecticide prices are way less than they were 15 years ago. And to top it all off, our yield goals are a lot higher. So you can really justify an insecticide treatment, but you've got to find some harmful bugs out there first before you decide to spray. Uh, that's the real key here. We aren't suggesting that you just throw in an insecticide because it is inexpensive in every spray spray pass you're making in your field. No way. We're definitely interested in scouting those fields first, looking to find problem insects that could rob yield. If we find them, then see how many there are. Now, if there's two bugs in the whole field, it's not worth treating. But if there's two bugs on every plant, it's a slam dunk. You've got to get out there and treat or we're going to have a problem. We don't want to kill off the beneficials that could take care of the job for us. But at the same time, we don't want to let problem bugs blow up on us and become a big problem later in the season. In terms of which insecticide you should use, we mentioned the cheap pyrethroids. That's great. But there are other pyrethroids too, like for example, bifenthrin, that's brigade or capture. That's a step up. That gives you some activity on mites. You can use Lorsban. That's an organophosphate product. There are a few other insecticides out there too, but really it's typically pyrethroids or Lorsban. Yeah, how important was that, uh, that Lorsban didn't get taken off the market? Well, we really needed Lorsban because otherwise most guys were just going to be stuck with a pyrethroid. We want to rotate modes of action. All right, now when we think about Lorsban, can you mix that with anything like you can with the pyrethroids? Well, you can mix it with some things, but Lorsban's hot. So I don't encourage you to mix Lorsban ever with foliar fertilizer, and you have to be careful about certain herbicides and fungicides like Bucktrol, for example, or maybe even Headline. Okay, length of control with pyrethroids and Lorsban. And they're both fairly similar. They're not going to last nearly as long as most of the companies will tell you they're going to last. You can probably expect seven to ten days worth of residual. That's usually about it. And the knockdown on Lorsban is definitely quicker knockdown than Knockdown on Lorsban is quicker, especially when we're talking aphids. So you have to look at what bug are you really after. Is it going to do a great job on that bug? Is it going to do a quick job on that bug? That type of thing. Okay, how about re-entry intervals? Well, it's going to vary depending on the crop and the use rate, that type of thing, maybe even the state. So you just have to take a look at what the label is. In a lot of cases, we'll tell you, hey, once the, the stuff has dried on the plant so you can't physically get it on you, usually you're safe, but check the label. All right, and one last thing we hear about is mite flare-ups. How does that happen? Well, what happens is if you've got a cheap pyrethroid, that's great for most bugs, but it's not going to kill mites. The problem, though, is when you go out and spray, you kill all your aphids, your bean leaf beetles, all that type of thing, you also kill the beneficials that might control the mites. So now the mites have nothing to stop them out in the field, and they flare up. So that's where, if you're worried about that, you might want to switch over to Lorsban or bifenthrin. Unfortunately, with spider mites on the coast, east coast, west coast, maybe even down in the southern United States, we've got resistance. So bifenthrin and Lorsban don't work real well. That's where you have to start looking at 
things like Zeal, Oberon, Onager. Look at something else to get those mites under control. Well, foliar insecticides are certainly an important part of the crop protection system for corn, soybeans, wheat, and other crops. Take a look at the foliars. They've come way down in price, and the return on investment is very good. Well, return on investment is always good if you're trying to control our Weed of the Week. I'll tell you how to stop it on your farm coming up next.